How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be talking about whether or not taking testosterone for gender affirming medical care is the same as taking anabolic steroids when it comes to athletic performance or bodybuilding. This video is kind of inspired by a former video that I did before where someone commented who was a lot less educated on what steroids are and basically came to the conclusion that hormone replacement therapy for transmasculine individuals is basically the same thing as taking anabolic steroids. So I'm making this video to further explain why they are not the same and that they're in fact very different and have different outcomes to the person taking them. The first thing I want to highlight is the fact that the word anabolic st steroids is very much a generalized term for the layman to understand, the layperson to understand what steroids really are. Steroids are essentially lipid soluble, fat soluble hormones that our body produce in order to go through other body mechanisms. So anabolic steroids are not the only form of steroids and testosterone isn't the only form of anabolic steroid. In fact, we have hundreds of different types of anabolic steroids in our body that help us build up. Anabolic means to build something up. So it could either be building up your muscles, but it can also mean building up tissues and building up different form of organs to make them more suitable for whatever environmental changes your organs are experiencing. In fact, estrogen is a form of steroid. Another example of a steroid is cortisol, which is our primary stress hormone that's elicited whenever we're going through a very difficult situation. And that hormone cortisol helps us kind of physiologically deal with that stressor. So when the average person outside in the real world uses the word anabolic steroids, they usually mean testosterone, which is one of the building blocks of muscle building and it really helps with someone with their athletic performance. And testosterone has other very important characteristics that's very favorable to transmasculine individuals because it gives them secondary sex characteristics, such as increased body hair, increased mus upper body muscle mass, and body fat redistribution that is very important for someone who aligns as more masculine than feminine. Testosterone also in, uh, deepens your voice, which happened to me, and is also a hormone that increases someone's libido, whether or not they identify as male, female, or non-binary. Even cisgender women have levels of testosterone in their bodies that help them bodybuild as well. Of course, there are female powerlifters and female weightlifters, and they have increased testosterone in their body because of the bodybuilding that they do does feed forward activation and allows their muscle to build up because they're producing more testosterone. So a lot of you are probably thinking, well, that means you all are still using anabolic steroids regardless whether or not you are using it for performance enhancement or being a transmasculine individual. That is not true as well. If you really think about it, anabolic steroids are mostly used to go beyond the scope of the hormones ranges in physiological hormone ranges in your body. So the average cisgender male has a testosterone hormone level of 300 nanograms per deciliter to 1000 nanograms per deciliter. And that is the average physiological, normal physiological response to testosterone in the body. When someone takes anabolic steroids, their intention is to go beyond the average physiological response, which means cisgender men who are taking anabolic steroids are shooting up their testosterone levels way beyond that limit of 1000 and cisgender female bodybuilders who are taking testosterone are competing in female categories where their testosterone levels are far beyond the normal cisgender female ranges. When a trans masculine individual takes testosterone, their goal is to move their testosterone ranges to the average physiological cisgender male typical range, which is between the 300 to 1000 nanograms per deciliter. And doctors make incredible, incredible careful calculations to get to these levels. When uh, transmasculine individuals start going to their hormone doctor for testosterone, the doctor does routine labs to make sure that their testosterone levels are within those ranges. If they're too high, their testosterone dosage is lowered, and if they're too low, their testosterone dosage is peaked to the point where it reaches that range again. But again, it will be brought down if it's way beyond the normal physiological ranges for 
testosterone in your body. Also, another huge thing when it comes to the medication of testosterone that transmasculine individuals use is actually vastly different from the designer anabolic steroids that's used in the market for performance enhancement. I'm going to post here the common list of anabolic steroids that are used in bodybuilding and out of that huge list only two of them are actually used for transmasculine individuals to increase their testosterone levels which tells you that a lot of these um, a lot of these drugs up here are actually not well optimal for physiological testosterone ranges. There are specific formulations made for performance enhancement only, which is made, of course, illegally. In that huge list that I just posted up here, only testosterone sipunate and testosterone propionate intramuscularly are used for transmasculine individuals to reach their desired testosterone levels in their body. You'll also notice that some of those drugs are actually oral testosterone medications. It's actually really, really contraindicated in the United States to prescribe anyone oral testosterone and a doctor can get in trouble or it's not even possible honestly to prescribe oral testosterone because it's very toxic to the liver. I personally use testosterone sipunate and I'm a pretty small dude so I'm not super jacked up. I am bodybuilding and hopefully I'll get to a point where I can be the body physique that I want but I am not accelerating my bodybuilding process any more than any regular cisgender male is because my levels are strictly kept between the ranges of 300 to 1000. Now, I will say that there are a small group of transmasculine individuals that do abuse testosterone because of the fact that they are in the bodybuilding scene. There has been an increased need for, unfortunately, an increased need for transgender men specifically who are expected to be hyper masculine and they internalize it and they decide to go into competitive bodybuilding where they do start abusing anabolic steroids and at that point you can categorize it you can categorize it as anabolic steroid use however when a transmasculine individual is only using testosterone to reach the ranges of physiological cisgender men it's actually not for anabolic steroid use it's for gender affirming medical care that's it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you guys got something out of it. I hope you guys have realized that it's not the same because it's very different and has different outcomes. And of course, there's a whole lot of unsatisfying side effects when it comes to anabolic steroid use. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, share my video. Also follow me on Twitter and Instagram where I keep you up to date with my life and what I'm doing outside of youtube world and informing you of what's going on in the world and i'll see you on the next one this is ben